Today we're going to start um, Nun Beis Amid Beis. This the two dots. Amid the Var Mamurim. Here we thank Hashem that we're able to learn Torah every day. It's just about learning Hashem. This is English. Beautiful. So learning the Lenish Mas. Abigail the Mas Baruch Binyam and the Sons of Ben Benzion. We're playing with Abigail the Ben Sara, and the guy gets a little yesbin. I mean, okay, in the Mishnah, back in the Mishnah, which is uh, 10, 11 pages ago, we learned that there are certain people that don't have a chazaka. If they go into someone else's property and they're there for three years, it does not mean that it's theirs. Those were craftsmen and partners and, and artists, uh, Petrapas, right, trustees. We said also a man doesn't have a chazak in his wife's property, a wife doesn't have a chazak in her husband's property. We're talking about that they can make a purchase from, from the master, from the uh, from the owner, from the partner, but that, they would need to hold on to the document. If they don't have the document, then just being there doesn't mean that it's theirs. Same with the husband and wife. They can make, they can purchase, but without the document, it doesn't show us that it's theirs. Can't, can't the husband take ownership of the wife's land to the wife? Um, no. When they get divorced, she takes it back. So he uses it. But, and also a child can't have a chazaka in his father's property, and the father can't have a chazaka in his, the child's property. If, if they want to buy it, then they have to hold the document. When do we say this? The Mishnah says, b'machzik. When do we say this? This was b'machzik. This was someone that was taking possession over a three-year period. The way we learned it was Aval Benaisin Matana, but if someone is giving a gift, Rachin Shachalko, or brothers that are dividing, so that an immediate chazak, you see there's two types of chazaka, an immediate chazaka that each of these can do. Where the immediate chazaka means the kinyan of the chazaka. When you show ownership, that works. That's how we learned it when we read the Mishnah. So the Gemara asks right away, Atu Kalhani Damrina and Labani Chazakanino. Are all the people that we said before are not able to make a chazaka a Kenyan? In other words, um, if a, a husband wants to take possession of his wife's property and she sells it to him, he can't make the uh, the acquisition through a chazaka through showing ownership. Or if she's taking possession, he sells it to her. So then she can't take possession through. Uh, through making that type of Kenyan, there's different types of uh, chazaka. Yeah, but regardless of that. Yeah, we're talking about how does the kid, can, can they make this Kenyan? Right. So, Sales. Right. Right. So even if there's a document, uh, but nevertheless, there's um, th there would be either money given or there would be a, an acquisition that was done so, uh, that's done with um, a chazaka. So the Gemara answers, sorry, uh, the Mishnah is missing words and it has to be read as follows. When do we say that there's problem problems here with the chazaka that it would require three years and only then it would work and even then it's only for certain people that's only now the, the the phrasing over here is very different than the way it's translated in the rest of the masechta over here chazaka shishimataina means that would be a chazaka that has with it a taina a taina means a someone contesting Usually we say chazaka sheishima taina means that you have a claim backing the chazaka. Taina means a claim. So the claim of who? Usually we say chazaka sheishima taina means that the person that's in the property for three years has a claim that it's his because I bought it. Now, now we're translating it different. 
Bazaka that the person is there for three years. Sheishim Matayna means that there's someone else that's contesting. Kigain, for example, Meicharay Malay Macharti. The seller is saying, I never sold that property. And the purchaser is saying, What do you mean? I bought it from you. But if there's no contester, for example, someone is giving a gift for brothers that are dividing it up, and someone that's taking possession over property of a, of a, of a convert that passed away and he doesn't have any relatives, but basically from Hefker. That he's just acquiring it from Hefker. No, other parts culture or is a chazaka. Then it's going to be a chazaka automatically, not automatically. It's going to be a chazaka once you do those, these um, uh, these uh, these uh, types of improvements to the property. Either you you set up a door, or you you fence it, or you break a, a, an opening in the fence. And the curious property goes to someone. No. Someone steals from a convert, and the person and the convert dies. Oh, so in order to pay it back, you give it to the car. But if the gear passes away without children, then it becomes hefker, and anyone can take it. Yeah, it's only when it's stolen and being repaid that it goes to the bank. So what did we learn here? The way we learned it originally in the Mishnah was the is the way that we're learning here. With the way we learned it in the Mishnah was based on the Rashbam explaining it, how the Gemara explains it. That there's a difference between the two types of chazakas. There's a chazaka that takes three years, and there's a chazaka that's done, um, that's just showing ownership by making an improvement to the property. So when there's a, a, a um, if someone contesting, then the chazaka takes three years. But if you just want to show ownership of the property by making an improvement, so then like someone is giving you a gift or... Uh, He's not contesting. You just go ahead and make a Kenyan. So one of those ways of Kenyanim is making a chazak and set up a fence or um, open the fence or something like that. Taner Rabbi B'Kedushin Be'Levi Rabbi taught in the Brises of of Masech the Kedushin that was taught in the house of Levi. Now, uh, Rabbi and Rabbi Shia were the ones that edited the Brises that they sefta in the Brises. Now, so there was also in the house of Levi, which is another student of Rebbe, name is Levi, Levi Barsisi, what's his name? So he also had uh, collections of prices. And Rabbi Shia, there was one in Masechtis Kedushin, Rabbi Shia taught this price. It says, If someone in front of the seller goes ahead, and he locks the, the gate, sets up a lock on the gate, or he sets up a fence, or he breaches the fence. So then it's considered a chazaka, if it's in front of the seller. So he um, he, uh, he analyzes this, and he says, if it's in front of the seller, in, then it works. So right before, but if it's not in front of the seller, then like, it doesn't work. Well, so then he's asking this as a question. So, What's, what's going on? Why does it have to be specifically in front of him? Like, really, I should read it to surprise my... Without, right? Without a... Uh, if it's not in front of him, it doesn't work. So I'm a Rav, a Rav explains what the price of me in Tachi Kamar. If it's in front of the seller, you know, the guy's watching you, so then he doesn't need to tell him, go and make a chazaka. But if it's not in front of the seller on top of Nungimel, then you have to say the actual phrase. There's a phrase that said that allows the person to make the acquisition. That phrase is go make a Kenyan. Go show ownership and acquire. So then he has to say it. So the, the, the question over here that's being answered is what was, why does it have to be in front of the, the seller? Because if it's in front of the seller, then you don't have to say you don't have to say those words. Otherwise, if they're not standing in front of the property, then the seller has to tell the purchaser, go and make a Kenyan. And then uh, he goes and makes a Kenyan. Yeah, 
Right. So the logic is, is because when he's there, when he's standing there, he's watching what you're doing. So then that's uh, that means that he's agreeing to that. He's agreeing to the transfer. And if he's not standing there, then he has to make the statement that he's agreeing to it. Boy, Rav. Rav has the following question. Why is only one brother Earlier Gemaras, we had one brother yeah. who's doing it. Should they all be doing it? Or they just I think know there's about usually it? there's usually one person that has to take that has to make decisions. Otherwise, too many cooks. Yeah, yeah. he's divided amongst something else. So That's I'm usually we're talking about, that he's talking about before they, they divided up. Where are you from? I'm, I'm just oh, you're a little behind. Beginning. Yeah. yeah, so that that's before they divided it up. Now, once they divide it up, then each one gets it. That, that was talking about before it was divided. Like the selling it though, like the market, that's how the people right. before it was divided. Right, right. Okay. How does it work with a with a gift? Rav asks. I'm a Shmuel. Shmuel says, Mighty by Leila Abba. What is Rav asking? What's his question? How does it work with a gift? In other words, by a sale, um, by a sale, we just learned that if the person is watching, if the seller is watching, then he can make a chazaka without any statement. Then the, the, the purchaser can make a chazaka without a statement. If the seller is not watching, then he has to make a statement. What happens by a gift? Does he have to make the statement of lech even when he's not watching? Uh, not even when he's not watching. Does he, when he's not watching, does he have to make the statement, or do we say that the fact that he's giving it to him, Rav is going is of the opinion that or matana is buying yafa nice. Someone that gives a gift, he gives the gift with a, a generous eye. So there's certain things that he doesn't need to do, like we had before, certain cases of if a, a husband is giving his wife property. So if he's selling it to her, then he still eats the fruits in the property that he sold her. But if he gives it to her as a gift, then he doesn't even eat the fruits in the properties, which means that giving a gift in a certain way is even stronger than a, than a sale in a certain way. So Rav is asking here, does the same halacha apply to a gift? Do you need the same statements? So mighty by Leila Abba, Shmuel asks, what's, uh, what's, uh, what's Rav's question? Uh, Rav's name was Abba. And... Um, He's called Rav. Like Rebbe is called Rebbe. Rebbe Yudanasi is called Rebbe in Eretz Yisrael. So the master of Bavel was called Rav. Help the Yud. Same like Rav versus Rebbe. Uh, although all the all the sages of the Gemara, if they say uh, if it's Rav, then that means that they lived in Bavel. If it's Rebbe, it means they lived in Eretz Yisrael. Yeah. So um, Shmuel uh, Shmuel says, "What's what's this question?" And his logic goes like this: Hashdo ma mecher the chiyav lezuze yamale lechazik kni in iloy loy. When it comes to a sale, the guy is giving actual cash; he's giving money, and nevertheless, he still has to tell him lechazik kni, go and make a kenyan. And if he doesn't say that, then there's no transfer. Matana when there's giving a gift where there is no transfer of money, he's not giving him money. So for sure, he should have to tell him lechazik kni, go and make a kenyan. Where we get the Hametz cell, which is like a uh, handkerchief or something. Yeah, and, but here we're not here because it's property. We're not can't make a Kenyan with that. Here, that's personal. This is realty. When it comes to realty, you have to actually make a Kenyan in the property itself. You set up a fence, you, you uh, do some landscaping. No, you have to. So Shmuel, uh, Shmuel is, is, uh, is surprised that Rav should think that there's a, a possible leniency by a gift. But Rav Savar, but the Gemara explains, but Rav holds, Man One, someone that's giving a gift, gives a gift within a very generous eye. So therefore, maybe when he's giving the gift, he doesn't need to say, As the question is, when is the deal finalized? Um, 
what statement does he have to make? I mean, they were discussing selling the property. He gave him the money, right? Or maybe give him a, a, down, a down payment. He gives him probably a down payment. He's going to pay him the rest later. So, um, so at that point, can the guy go and, and take possession of it? If he tells him, go and take possession, so then good. That's, uh, that's if the person isn't, if the field isn't right there in front of him. If the field is right there in front of him, then the guy just walks in and says, thank you very much. And he goes in and he takes possession and the person doesn't have to make that statement. When it comes to a gift, Rav had a question if he has to say that because you see he's being so generous, he probably wants you to take it right away, right? There's no transfer of money anyway. Uh, Shmuel says the opposite. Shmuel says that, um, that if there's no transfer of money, then for sure you need to say, Lechazekukni. Now the Gemara says, the uh, Kama, how much of a Chazaka do you have to make? Uh, not Chazaka of three years, but how much of a Chazaka of an improvement in the property do you have to make in order to take to, to take ownership? Gemara says, Kiddush Shmuel. It's like Shmuel says, Dama Shmuel, Gadar Geder Veshlim El Asara, Paritz Pirzik, they should kind of speak to about Reza Chazaka. Someone builds a fence. And he makes it ten tefachim. That's a uh, about this high, about this high. Ten tefachim, about forty inches off the ground, about waist height. Uh, yeah, maybe a little less. Is that? What do you think? Uh, oh, a little over three feet. A little over three feet. So. Um, so, um, how big is the fence? A ten tefachim, or if he breaks a, a opening in the fence in order for him to be able to go in and go out, that's considered a chazaka. I get the What was this fence that we're talking about? You see, um, you see, the way the Gemara put this is that. A minimal fence is, is going to be acceptable. The expression was culture, the smallest amount. We said there was 10 tvachim. So 10 tvachim is a real fence, right? 10 tvachim is a real fence. So that wouldn't be considered culture. So now we're going to ask, like, how do you have a 10 tvachim fence that you're calling a culture, the smallest amount? So the smallest amount, then that's not 10 tvachim. The smallest amount is probably smaller than that. So the Gemara says like this. Um, I get the What is this fence that you're saying that it's the smallest amount, kolshehu, whatever it is, that's going to be acceptable? Ilema, if you say to me, if the fence was there already and you weren't able to get in, you weren't able to go through through the fence. It was there. Maybe it wasn't ten tefachim, but you couldn't get through. Why couldn't you get through? If it's not ten tefachim, maybe the way the slant of the hill slope or something, we, we weren't able to get in. And now you also can't get in. So my other, so what improvement did you do? That's not considered any improvement. That should not be a chazata. Talking about someone who bought a field and can't make No, they 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 bought a field, and the owner said to go ahead and make a kenyan, and they did the, like a very minor thing to it. No, is that considered a kenyan? At what point is that minor? So we're saying, well, if there was if they fixed the fence. Um, they say that, well, were, were you able to enter into the property without, could you, could you step over that fence beforehand? And, um, and now you can't step over it. So if you were not able to step over the fence beforehand, and now you're also not able to, so what improvement did they do? So Ella de Mikara Visalkale, it must mean that originally you were able to step over that fence. And now you're not able to. So Tuvava, then that's considered a real fence. You made it into a whole fence. Why? That's not called a culture. I call the minimal amount. Uh, you mamish fixed the whole thing. So the Gemara says, like, tricha, no, it would only be necessary. Originally, you could step over it with ease. But now, with difficulty, you can step over it. So you still didn't make a real fence. It's not like no one can get in. You just made it a little harder. And that's considered a chazaka. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That would be the null. There's, there's three parts. There's null, gadar, parats. Null would be to change the lock. Gadar means to set up a fence, and parats means to open a, a door. In the fence. 
Yeah, so the null would be to change law. Yes, so, are, are these acts the equivalent of you know lifting, pulling, and whatever those other things are that we do to make a Kenyan on Matatalan? It's a minor act that shows ownership. In effect, yeah. Yeah. So then why is Shmuel worried about it being more than just a symbolic act? Shmuel is making it a, a symbolic act. He's saying it only needs to be a cultural, but it still needs to be something significant. Mm -hmm. You know, even when you pull an item or you, uh, or you lift an item, it has to be in the right location. If it's in the wrong location, it doesn't work. It has to be in a place where you're able to it's able to become yours or whatever, not a Rishas Rab on the side of the Rishas Rab and not in this guy's mm -hmm. There's a criteria to each one. Yeah. So what is what is enough to be a real symbol symbol that works is what right. he's asking. Okay. Right. So uh Pirza. Hi Pirza when it says to break a hole in the fence, what is that? How how big is that? You know, we're saying that that's also considered a cultural small amount. If you say that originally you were able to get through the wall, get through the fence, and now you can also get through the fence, even though um, the, with the same ease because you uh, you broke a hole and well there was a hole there anyway, so it's fine. So my of it. So then you didn't do any any significant uh, change in this. Rather, it must mean that originally you weren't able to get through the hole in the fence, and now you are able to get through the hole in the fence. The Gemara says, if that's the case, then tuva, but then you did a lot. Then that's not considered a kosher. It says, Originally, you could get through, but it was very difficult. And now you can get through with these. That's the same answer that we gave before. That you didn't make it perfect, but you made it a little bit easier, and that's already considered the chazaka, the Kenyan. Rabasi said the name of Rabbi Let's say you put a little some pebbles there and that made a difference. Or if you took away some pebbles and that made a difference. That's considered a chazak. So these pebbles that your uh, gravel or something that you put there, that changes the um uh, the status, that's considered a chazak. The Gemara says, My nasan, what did you put there? My natal, what did you take away? You think that maybe there was um, there was a stream of water that was coming up to the uh, was coming up to the to the field, and it was going to flood the field. So this guy came and put some gravel there um, just to block the water from coming in. So we say like this: when it says that he put the gravel there. That means that he blocked it. He was the uh, the, the dike. What was that story with the, the guy? Dike. The dike with his finger. He blocked the water from uh, from flooding the field, or um, he took it away because the field was flooded, and he took away some gravel to drain to drain the field to let the water get out because the field was flooded. So we say, oh wow, that would be a real chazaka. The problem is. But that is not considered a chazaka. That you should do even if you're not the owner. Because if you see someone's item is getting ruined, you have an obligation because of a Shabbos you have to make sure you, you know, return a lost object. Turning a lost object doesn't mean find something, doesn't only mean finding something on the street and giving it back to its owner. Returning a lost object, I mean, if you're seeing, if you see something that belongs to someone getting ruined and you take it away from getting ruined, you stop that. Sitting in the rain, you bring it inside. That's also Hashava Saved. Because it was getting lost. It was getting ruined. So here you have a field that's about to get ruined. So the guy comes and puts a uh, some pebbles there so the field doesn't get ruined. Or he the field that was that was being flooded and he takes the pebbles away so that the, it should drain. So that's that's not a sign of ownership. That's just the sign of a good Samaritan. You just not, the, not use that term. So don't tell me things. It means you're just uh, you're just uh, you're just uh, being helpful. Doesn't mean that you're the owner.
Please remember it's a family share. Because when you ask me online, you have no idea who said this because when you question me, Rabbi, you have to give me an idea what he's asking. Well, when it's a good question, the Rabbi says, All right, well, I'll just make sure. Sure. I have a question there. Yeah. This question was just raised about uh, closing the, the whole timer thing. on. Right. No timer. You could put the, yourself on timer. Oh, I'm, I'm tired. Whoa, that is a family share. There's no need for that. I'm asking a question. That's your counsel. Okay. You have 15 seconds to ask Changing that question. Get your answer. <laughs> Changing word. Can I ask my question, please? When the Gemara we recognize we recognize the uh, the delegate from that side of the room. When I ask, when the Gemara asked the question, came and asked the question, uh, trying to flip it that oh, when he was closing the uh, the dike, the right. finger in the dike, this wasn't really a chazaka; it was yeah. just doing good. So what, this was in contrast to making the hole larger, uh, and that was making it a chazaka. That was the statement right well, before. You have the two options. So the statement was either you're adding in pebbles or you're taking away pebbles, and both of them are a chazaka. Yeah, but I'm saying this followed the statement about making a hole. Right. So my question is, the famous story of using the quote from uh, Tehillim of Farats to get there of the king that didn't go through this gate, didn't uh, go through this gate, but he broke a hole no, through the wall. Yeah, By the breaking story. the hole through the wall, did the king make a chazak and saying, ah, now this is mine? Or was he just making a hole? Just making a hole. So why do we say here? Yeah, because the guy makes a hole, it is. Yeah. The king can't get it. Why the king you? owns it anyway. What king owns mean? it anyway. King owns the whole, uh, the whole land. Oh, eminent yeah. domain. Yeah. Okay. That's my yeah. case. We'll go back. Just letting you know, our ratings plummet whenever Doctor Stein asks a question. Just letting you know. I just checked when the Nielsen numbers. The ratings go down. So it's just kind of like except uh, in Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Is not really good. It's not really right. 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 So, so, so a return yeah. a lost object. It's not really yeah. Yeah. Opinion. Just because you're doing something to it doesn't mean it's a Kenyan. Right. So it would have to be some oh, here. You're buying it, but it has to show that this is only something that an owner would do. That's it has to be, show real ownership. There's something you do even it's with a that. fine line. So I'm just trying to find what that line is to improve something or return something or steal yeah. something. Yeah, so this is what the Gemara is going to tell it. Ella, rather, did summit lay Maya, not Maya. Rather, what it means is that you, the, this is the Nasan you put in, you put in um, <clears throat> the uh, pebbles because you wanted to hold the water in. You wanted the water to, to, um, accumulate. The, to accumulate so that it should seep into the uh, to the soil. To you wanted it. That's an improvement that you would do. That it's only that the owner would do because sometimes you could water the uh, field, but it just ru rushes off. It just runs off the top of the soil. It doesn't uh, doesn't penetrate. You need the water to penetrate into the. So um, so what he what he's doing now is he's adding he's adding pebbles to hold the water in for longer. And then when he's taking away the pebbles, and then nototzrar va'arvachle maya would mean that he's allowing more water in, not allowing the water out. It's not because he's 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 taking away a damage, it's because he's trying to improve it. Right. And that's how the Gemara explains what Rabchia, not Rabchia, what Reb was referring to. Okay, v'amar Rabasiyam Rabechanan. Another another statement from Rabasi in the name of Rabechanan. Stay sadis. If you have two fields. And there's a border between them. Let's say you purchase both of them. So you made a chazaka in one of them to acquire it. You acquired that one. You only acquired one of them. If you made a chazaka in this field, you had intention, you're acquiring this field and the neighbor, and the neighboring field, which is also, uh, you also purchased. I say, Kana, you acquired this one, uh, but you didn't acquire the, the, the neighboring one. Now, I have to make a correction. 
we're not talking about where he purchased it. We're talking about where it's a nechse hager. It's a property of a of a convert that passed away that doesn't have any relatives. And so therefore, this is owner, owner, ownerless property. The reason why there's going to be a distinction here between if he purchased it or not is because if you if it's a purchase, that means there's a someone that's transferring it into your possession, and there's you that's taking possession. Now, because you have that extra part, that there's someone that's transferring the possession to you, so when you take possession, you only have to make a Kenyan in one property and you acquire all the other properties. When there's no one that's transferring possession to you and it's just you coming and making, everything is you're taking possession, so then it only works in each individual yeah. one. So the problem over here is that because there's a border between the properties, so even though they're adjacent, but the the, uh, the there's only one property that you're making acquisition of. Is that think, the same thing when you call the domain, you get it all the things that are in the land, like you get the term? Like I got uh, sort of. Goes. Sort of. Over here, it's interesting. Here, the Gemara says um, that if someone would be selling you the field, the Gemara Kedushan said, Sadna da ar, da that there's only the, the um, Sadan is like a blanket, but I think it means like the tectonic plates. The, yeah. the plates of the uh, land are all one. Sadna da, it's all, it's all one. Is, Pangea. Cases when they're sharing a fence, both fields? Uh, but they're both sharing a fence. Yeah, they're sharing a border. You have two, two plots, but they're separated. They're like different. Yeah, so that's the problem. You have to you have to, if, if someone is selling it to you, then you only have to take possession of one of them. And you um, automatically got it. But if there's no one selling it to you, you're just taking it from Hefker, then you have to take each one. Okay. You take possession of each one independently. Yeah, they do. They they are. There is a, a a survey of of each land, and and um. But nevertheless, we're going to say that there's a thought that maybe you should be able to acquire the whole thing because it's attached, right? So, but we're saying no, it doesn't work like that. If if you have intention to acquire it and it's friend, you don't acquire its friend, which means the neighbor the neighboring field. Let's say you're making you're taking possession of this field, but you have only intention to take possession of the neighboring field. It's a little bit odd. But the so it says, Afa like kind of you don't acquire not the field that you're in and not the field that's each of them you didn't do correctly. Rabzira has a question. Let's say your intention is to acquire the border. And once you acquire the border, your intention is to acquire the field, the border, and the neighbor. Once you acquire the border, then that should be considered like you're like one step in, right? Like the uh, Venn diagram. You grab onto this one and that autom automatically grabs that one, right? Like this. Yeah. What's the origin of the Olympic symbol? Is it a um I think it's a I think it's a Greek uh, symbol and it probably comes from the uh, Mercury. But I think why don't you just ask Naftali, he'll tell you the answer. You worried about saying good Sam and now you're asking about Greek mythology. <laughs> Thing. Don't ask Dr. Stein for yeah, answers. Yeah. Um, ask ask, ask Tali. Hey, hey. You have the expert right there. Maybe the U.S. cancel if you uh, <laughs> Okay. Oh, really? Oh. Symbol? Yeah. Oh, so interesting. <laughs> okay. So, um, Reb Zayr's question is, let's say you acquire the field together with the Meitzar, together with the neighboring field. That's what your intention is. Do we say, uh, you have to make a correction over here or something. You have to say, Meitzar, the high Meitzar, the high Ara, the high Ara. High Meitzar, the high Ara, the high Ara, the high Ara. This border is part of this field and it's also part of that field. So therefore you acquired everything. Maybe we say that each one is independent. These are each independent, independent properties. This field is independent from the border. The border is independent from the neighbor, the adjacent field. So this is Rabzeir's question, and we end with the takeo.
Boy Rebel Lazar, Rebel Lazar has a question. Let's say you didn't acquire this field to acquire the border, to acquire the neighboring field. No, you acquired the meta. You made a Kenyan in the meta. What did you do? You probably lifted it up. You made it more uh, uh, clear, the clear divider. But that meta, you had intention when you're doing that to make a fence for this side and to make a fence for that side, right? That one fence is a fence for both fields. This is a good question. Do we say that the border is considered like the reins when you pull an animal? Could be that there's several animals attached, but you have like one string that pulls all of them. So you say that, yeah, you can just pull that reins and then you got all you have all the animals. Or maybe we say that they're independent. And the Meitzar is its own its own territory, the, the border. I'm going to end this with a takeaway as well. Amar of Nachman, Amar Rabbi Baravua. Rav Nachman says the name of Rabbi Baravua, his father-in-law. Shnei Batim Zelf Nimizeh. Two uh, houses. One is inside the, the other one, which means that there's a, it's a two-roomed house. And in order to get to the inner room, you have to walk through the outer room. So the guy in the inner room is allowed to walk through the outside. The guy in the outside is not allowed to walk into the inside. Okay? So the uh, the main room here would be the inner room because the secondary room would be with the room that's bottled to it would be the outer room. So, the condo. well, it's a, it, this is a strange sort of condo where you have your neighbors have, have to walk to. Or... No, this is, a, this is the type of, this is a condo where you sublease your inside bedroom and you take the outer one. So the guy that's going into your bedroom has to walk through your outer room. So the Airbnb rented the room. Do they do that? Yeah. They don't have oh, they can join. And at Airbnb, they can rent like different rooms. They can rent out. And they, there's a shared area. Tell me again. Oh, it's ownerless. Yeah, we're talking about over here where it's the, um, where it's a Kenyan in the, uh, of Nixi Aguer. It's, uh, it's property of a, uh, of a convert that passed away. So uh, Rav Nachman's statement is, if you make a chazaka in the outer one, which means that you're fixing the locks, or you're fixing the wall, or you do something in the outer one to acquire it. So kind of you acquire it. Let's see, you make it to acquire the whole house, the, the outer one and the inner one. Then you only acquire the outer one, not the inner one. Because the inner one is not bottled to the outer one. It's the outer one that's bottled to the inner one. Let's see, you do it the opposite. Yeah, let's say you do, just, oh, I'm sorry, first we do the one that doesn't work. Let's say you make a Kenyan in the outer one, but with the intention to acquire the inner one. So you don't acquire the inner one either. You don't acquire the outer one either. You don't acquire the inner one, you don't acquire the, inner one. You don't acquire the outer one. Let's say your Kenyan is actually in the inner room to acquire it. So then for sure you acquire it. If your intention is to acquire the inner room and the outer room, you acquire both of them because the outer room is bottled to the inner room because of the walking, the, the way that you walk through, you walk through the outer one. This is like the field we spoke about that was inside the field that the guy had to have a walkway kind of so that they have access to the yeah, inside field. Yeah, they had, so yeah. he acquired the inner field, but he had access to the outer field. Yeah. You might take time to be able to get to something else. You're not going to be back here for some response. Yeah. He wants to acquire both of them, acquires uh, both of them. But if he only has intention to acquire the outer one, so this is interesting, he doesn't acquire the outer one or he, and he doesn't acquire the inner one. It's only that through acquiring the inner one, that the outer one we would say is bottled to it. But if you don't acquire the inner one, then you can't say that the outer one is bottled to it and you automatically acquire it because you didn't acquire the inner one. Okay. Um, uh, another statement from Rav Nachman. Um, Rav Nachman, um, Rav Nachman, um, Rav Baravu. So they add in above over there. And Rav Nachman says the name of Rav Baravu. Abayna paltrin gedoy lemenech se'agere ba'achavahem lemblasis kana. 
This is interesting. If someone builds a a um, uh, paltry and is a, a large room. How do they translate it? This is a mansion. A mansion. A mansion. What happened? If someone builds a uh, a large room in the property of a of a convert, a deceased convert, a palace, and someone else come, but he don't he didn't put the doors on. You know, when they're, when they're doing construction, uh, they start with like these wooden doors, these like plywood doors. So the guy didn't put up the plywood doors. He just built the uh, the thing and he didn't put up the doors. So it says uh, someone else comes and puts the doors on this, what the mm -hmm. guy built. Kana, the guy that came and put up the doors acquires it. This Do not leave the construction site without putting the doors on. Someone else can acquire this. He's the builder. He's... Yeah, this is a builder that's coming in, taking ownerless property, building a house on it. But because you didn't put the doors on, we say, well, you didn't make any improvements yet. Someone else. Someone died. Oh, someone died. And the guy is to take possession, starts, comes in and starts to build the house. But he doesn't so put doors on. Now, I'm assuming that it's not one of these mansions like a real man. I'm assuming uh, it's a, like a log cabin that it just takes an afternoon to, you know, like the Lego logs. So, so you just put it up. Set it up, but uh, it didn't say that it says Paltin. And this is using an extreme example here. The guy actually built the whole mansion and then um, he didn't put the doors. My time, what's the reason why the first person didn't acquire it? Is Kama Livni Balmudaka. The first person was just uh, was just playing around with bricks. Did you see the plywood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because once it can lock, once it can lock, then it's considered like a like something you can live in, right? Anything that would close would be good. But you, see, you have to have some sort of doors of it. So basically, the doors are is the whole thing. This is a um. So the hair is of the person that died. Yeah, but if the no, person, this was a human. It was a convert that didn't have children. Yeah. I didn't read that. Yeah, there's a discussion about how the doors are the one is really the um, the entire house. If someone wants to dedicate his house, um, so he uh, he changes the doors, change the doors, like a whole uh, new dedication. Does it stop a gun if it breaks in? Okay. There's a sikha about this. Yeah. There's a sikha about this rec with respect to Besa Mikdash Yeah. Yeah. There's a lock, but he never, he never locked the lock down. It, it, I think so, the doors work without the lock, and then there's another thing that's just considered the lock. All the I think so. Wood. Yeah, there's another thing which is the lock. Amar Rabdini Bar Yosef, Amar Rabalazar. Rabdini Bar Yosef says the name of Rabalazar. Rabalazar is Rabalazar ben Pedas, the uh, the Amir in Eretz Israel, student of Rabbi if someone finds a palace, the palace was already built now, um, a mansion in the property of a of a, uh, a convert that had passed away, and he wants to make an improvement in it, so he comes and he plasters it, or he uh, what is kier? Yeah. Or he kier means he puts on a, uh, a picture. He puts on a, uh, a design. Makes a design. Yeah, he does plaster or a design. So Conan, he acquires it. He puts graffiti on it. <laughs> Later on, uh, we're gonna see that it's not so simple. It's not just a small picture. Here we're talking about a larger, um, something a little larger. It's As it says, it says right now, the comma, how big does this plaster have to be? How big does this picture have to be? This design? I'm Rabbi Yosef Amma. Yosef says it has to be an Amma. I'm Rabbi Chizda. Rabbi Chizda adds in, can I get a Pesach? It also has to be directly opposite the wall. Because when it's directly opposite the wall, then it's very, uh, opposite the door, then it's very noticeable. The first thing that when you, uh, when you walk in, uh, <laughs> How First thing you know, when you walk in, that's what you notice. Passes away and doesn't have any place to stay. But it goes to stay to possess it. Is that you know what I'm saying? Is that what it means? It just no. stays, it just stays put there, and then it, 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 it,
to it that's from Andrew Campbell is preparing Even the game. They take, they take all the, the it's, the, it's the first thing you notice after the after first thing you notice what was that first thing you notice after after the door uh -huh. what, what Usually, happened to him I don't know. when the person passes the administrative report they bring up this paper that says everything is sufficient uh -huh. and basically the count time starts in there people don't care what this paper says uh -huh. how long do you have a month six months how long do you have uh, does someone have to claim property from a relative um, before the state takes it? Yitzi, uh, I can't hear him. Yitzi, you must be on mute. Oh. Okay. You know, what about, I heard stories of uh, in, uh, during the time of uh, the Inquisition, but when Jews had gone to South America, that those who were still worried about post-traumatic stress as well, that the uh, Grand Inquisitor might come to Latin America, South America, right. but they were still practicing, that they would hide their Jewish paraphernalia behind the front door so that if they came in, it was hidden when the door was open. So it's interesting because it's just the opposite of if we're straight ahead, oh, there's right. the left, oh, this, you see right away, it's a Jewish house. They'd open the door and they wouldn't see anything, and then on the wow. way out, they'd... that's smart. What if when you walk in, just like the long hallway, you can't see the end of the thing? Uh, probably mean the first thing that you see when you open the door. I don't know. You know, the with the uh, Remendel Fotovas, he was in prison, so uh, they play cards, and cards were, were forbidden in prison. So one time they they saw through the hole that they're playing cards, the guards. So they opened the door and they searched. They didn't find the cards. Wow. They searched everyone. So he asked the guy, and he saw afterward, the guy left, and then he started to play again. He said, how did you do this? So the guy told him, the, uh, one, he said, one of, a, one of the guys is a professional pickpocketer. So when the guard comes in to search, they put it, they in, put in, it his in his pocket. pocket. And then he searches everyone. Before he leaves, they take it out. <laughs> Yeah, he had Remendel had a lesson in Avaita Sashem, like what this, uh, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Amar of Amram. Yeah, my house, there's a uh, a blue wall. That's when we first uh, got the house. So we had a friend that was helping us with the painting and everything. He said, this wall should be blue. Whatever. You know, so the, the, anyway. They painted this wall blue, you know, the wall in my house, you know. That, it was already the, the, blue? Or no, they already painted blue. it blue. Anyway, my friend came over to see, oh, you got a new house. He came over to look. He says, oh, I see you didn't paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't like that color. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Amr of Amram. Oh, yeah, two years. Two years. You have to, uh, two years no. to take possession of the relative's no. property. <clears throat> Okay, uh, Rav Amram says, Hi, Milsa Amalan Rav Sheshis. The following statement Rav Sheshis told us, but however, but our eyes were lightened up from a brisa, Masnisa. What did he say? So Rav Sheshis said, Someone puts out this mats, puts out mats and he uh, mattresses. Is that what it says? Mattresses? It says mats. Uh, mats or mattresses on the property. He acquires it. Now, the problem is that he didn't make an improvement to the property. Usually, you acquire something by making an improvement. Over here, he's just like eating the fruits. He's just camping. So, but nevertheless, this is considered a hazaka. Isn't that interesting? You just, yeah, this is like a fourth possibility. It's like a function. Yeah, they quote over here in the notes that they, uh, uh, you don't need a mat to do this, but the only thing is the mat, if, without the mat, it wouldn't be considered a um, usual method. 
the source for this. Other Rishonim rejected this approach and explained that the mats beautify the land. Oh, that's interesting. Then according to that, it's not necessary to lie on the mat. It was just to spread it out. The Gemara doesn't say that he lied on it. He laid on, lied on it, laid on it. That's a uh, grammar question. Uh, yeah. So, um, Okay, so we're in what's our uh, what, what is the brisa that supports this? The Tanya was taught in a brisa. Um, now here we're talking about a chazaka that's done not in a property, but a chazaka that's done with a non-Jewish slave. It says no leimenala. He ties his shoe. He hits leimenala. Now this is talking about that the. Um, that the slave ties the master's shoe. Yeah? You, you make use of the slave to tie your shoe. Or to untie your shoe. So you have them carry your basket, your uh, your your uh, your clothing to the bathhouse, to the mikvah. And you have them address you and to bathe you. Probably means to put on or, 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 or ointments. Gardai, v'hildishai, v'nilai, v'gbiai. Uh, what's guard is to put on a belt. Oh, scrape scrape his skin. Oh, that's a uh, more bathhouse stuff. And Eli is he um, puts on his shoes. He, he carries him. He acquires the uh... now. Higbiyai. It doesn't say who picked up who. Amr Rab Shimon. Rab Shimon says like uh, for sure, if he lifts up the slave, for sure it's going to work. Because uh, the Gemara asks my camera, what is Rabbi Shimon saying over here? Oh, he He'd be a Lerab by what the sages said before Rabbi Shimon. They said, if the master, if the slave picks up the master, then the master acquires the slave because he made use of him. He's, he's carrying him. Uh, I'm sorry. He'd be a rabbi, but if the master picks him up, that's not considered acquisition. And I'm Reb Shimon. Reb Shimon says no. Uh, lifting up always works. If you if the master carries the slave, then that for sure works. Picks up something. Does he make it convenient for the master? Yeah. If the, the slave picks something up, make it can, then the master would acquire it. But here we're saying that when the slave does work for the master, one type of work is to carry the master. You know, like. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they don't want to be China. So they um, so that would be considered a Kenyan. And if master would acquire the slave, oh. the slave probably belonged to uh with Hefker, belonged to the, the convert that died that was acquiring him. And um that so would be reverse, considered uh, yeah. yeah. Reverse, reverse Kenyan. We say that if the slave ties the master's shoes or sandals or whatever. That shows that the master is coming. Right. That's proof that Bakirat from uh, uh, Ibum, or, I mean Chalitza, where the woman unties the sandal, and that shows she has nothing to do. It's the exact opposite. Do okay. uh, you have any plastic trophies? Untying the shoe. Okay. Shows and this sugya that we're learning today, is, is there a star? So that's about to show up now. Um, Spoiler alert. Is there a star? Wait, wait a, a drop more. Wait a drop more. I think the star is going to show up. Yeah. On the next page, there's going to be a star. We'll get some details on that. I'm Rabbi Yermia Bira, I'm Rabbi Yehuda. Yermia Bira says in the name of Rabbi Yehuda, who's a student of Rab, a student of Shmuel. Iman the shada lifta beitili the ara the ger. Someone throws a turnip into the crack in the ground of a of a uh, convert that had passed away. He's trying to acquire ownership, but he just throws the the, the turnip into the ground. That's not a chazaka. Now the problem here is because he didn't cover it over with soil, so maybe it's going to take root, maybe. But that's not. But if it does, the Gemara says, "My time." When you threw it on the floor, that's not considered an improvement. But now that it started to take root, 
that happened automatically, that wasn't your doing. But that's how you plant. No, you have to put, cover it over. You have to put it in the soil and cover it. Otherwise, we say back to say it's hidden up in the earth. We say this. You go like an onion, the head in the ground, and the feet are outside. Yeah. He says you're on a roll with Jewish words. Oh, you fresh day. All right, I understand. Thank you. I'm a shmuel. <laughs> shmuel says, "Hi man, the pashach dikla." If someone prunes a a, 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 a palm tree, a daita de dikla, if he's doing it with intention to improve the tree, he's pruning the tree, he's cutting the branches. If it's the intention of the tree, then kani, then he acquires the tree. A daita de chiyusa, but if he's pruning it because he wants the the uh, the um, the branches to feed the, the oh. little twigs to feed his animal, then like kani, then he doesn't acquire it because that was not an improvement to the tree. That's just something that he's making use of. Now, it's very interesting because when he made use of the land, according to the Rashbam, we said that that was considered ownership, laying on the land. Now he's making use of the tree. We don't say that it's considered ownership. Um, Tell me again. A contractor, you just hire someone to trim the trees. Right, right. Yeah, he's not making a kidney because uh, because it wasn't ownerless. It, here we're talking about where it was ownerless and he's trying to show ownership. He has to have that intention to... So the Rashbam says that because he's only taking the fruits, it's not considered a chazaka and that we consider it like someone that's making a chazaka shalemidas. Because you didn't have intention to improve, so we consider it like uh, an in, a chazaka without intention. And if he says, um, that I want to acquire with this, if he would say, I want to acquire with this collecting of the, these twigs, then it's as if he's in the marketplace and he says that I want to make a chazaka in the field with this speech. Does have a chazaka? Speech without action is not considered a chazaka. You need two things. You need to improve the property, and you also have to have intention. So here he's not in one second, but he is improving the property. Ooh. But it's not for the sake of improving property, but he's still improving the property. No, but he's only taking. So he had, because he, because he's he's taking the branches, which I'm is an improvement say, to the I'm property. One second, now yeah, it's going ahead. It's going ahead. One second. So, so um, you have to have both. You have to improve the property and intend to improve the property. You have to have both both things. Okay, this part with going in the marketplace and talking is like a funny example that Ashram brings. Anyway, I um, have to analyze that, uh, analyze that more. Hechidami. Uh, Hechidami, the Gemara says, how is the case? What it really means to say is, how do you know if what his intention is? Because when he's pruning, he's doing, uh, he's maybe using the, the, what, he's what he's taking off for the animals, but he's also improving. So shakal if he takes from both sides, then adaita didikla, then obviously he's doing it to improve the tree because he's trying to make it uh, uniform. Kulamichad gisa adaita but if he takes it all from one side, then he doesn't care about the tree, then he just cares about his animals because he's just cutting all, all the branches from one side of the tree. So then that's not going to be a tinian. Omer Shmuel, Shmuel also says, first the, first, the last name was from the name of Shmuel. Was small, that's it. I'm on the Zachi Zichia Adaita da Ara. Kani. Um, this is someone that's cleaning out the field from twigs and or, or, or weeds. So he acquires the field. Adaita the TV, but if he wants it because he wants it to uh, be able to burn this as wood, 
Yeah, he's taking it as like little twigs to burn. Then like honey, how does he know? How do we know what he's doing over here? And he's cleaning out the field. But how do we know what his intention is? Chuckle, Rav, if he's taking big ones and small ones, then then it's because he's trying to clean, clean the field. He's trying to improve the field. He should be able to plow better. Chuckle, Rav, if he's only taking the branches that he needs, which are the larger ones, and he leaves the little ones, then it's a daita the TV. Then it's obviously, it's just for him to take those branches. He's not acquiring. Ramar Shmuel, Shmuel says, Hi, man, the askal tikla, daita da'ara, kani. This person, that he's removing stones from the land. If it's for intention of improving the land, then he acquires the land. But if it's because he wants to make a flat floor, and he's taking the rocks to be able to have this uh, threshing floor so that he can put the grain on to crush it. So then, like honey, he doesn't acquire the land. Now, even though you're building a threshing floor that looks like maybe an improvement, but no, land, the main work of land is to grow. It would only be that if this was uh, um, the best place to have the threshing floor, that would be a Kenyan. But normally, regular land is to grow. This was just temporary threshing. Tem- temporary threshing. Yeah. Hey, Chidami, how do we know what he's doing? If he takes from a mound and he puts it into a ditch, that means he's trying to make the land flat. So Then he's in trying to improve the land. If he makes the mound and he um, leaves the ditch, then Abayit Beidari. Right? If he's making, uh, he's broadening the mound by adding more soil around the mound, but he's not taking the soil from the mound and putting it in the ditch, so he's not making everything flat. He's just making like a raised area, or he's making a lower area. <clears throat> so then that's because he wants the threshing floor. So that's not uh, an improvement. Amr Shmuel, Haimad the Pasach Mayabara, Someone that opens up a stream of, of some water into the land, a daita dara, if it's for the land, then kani, then he acquires it, a daita the kavri, but if it's to collect the fish, then like kani, and he doesn't acquire it. You know what they do in the um, the, the rice fields in uh, China? They put salmon in there. Yeah. So on those, on those, um, what's it called? Those, uh, uh, the terrace, yeah, but there's like no, a, it's, um, steps. On those steps. So on those steps, they have this little um, uh, drain where they can let the water out. They, they, they drain the water out and the salmon gets caught against the, uh, uh, the wow. net. There's a little net there. They just lift the thing up and the water comes out. And there's, uh, so they actually grow the salmon in together with the, uh, the they have sushi growing in the rice. Right, I was going to say, do they also wasabi in the sauces? <laughs> so they also have the wasabi and oh. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, one of the ways of, of catching fish would be to allow the stream of water to go through a, a field and you catch it with the net. You put the water goes through and the net and the fish just collect by that, by that net. So the Gemara says like this, if he's intending to water the field, then OK, good. Then he acquires the field. But if he's just intending to catch the fish, then he doesn't acquire. Hey, Hidami, how do we know what his intention is? Pasach tre bavi chad mayo v'chad the if he lets it in and lets the water out, then obviously he just wants to catch the fish. But uh, but if he's just letting the water in, then then it's just because he wants to to um, to water the field. He wants it to seep into the soil, like we said before. Uh, he, it's, uh, there was a woman, the Akhla Dikla bit Fischa, Placer Shnin. Um... She had, she was eating the, um, she, was, she, was, she was on a she was date. pruning, she was on a date. She, she was pruning date. a date tree for her animals for 13 yeah. years. Yeah. It's not going to end well. Asahahu, what happens over here? Asahahu. Uh, Gavra, the Bach adds in. This fellow comes, Rafik to say Porta, and he d- digs a little ditch under the uh, little, uh, like plowing under the tree. Asala Kami the Levi, they come to Levi. Ramrila Kami the Marukva, and some say that, he, that they came to Marukva. Ukma Biyade, he puts it in his hands. 
After 13 years, she didn't acquire it yet. She comes and she's screaming. What do you want from me? You didn't do it properly. You didn't make a Kenyan. You only took the you took the branches from one side. You didn't you never made it uniform. You didn't uh, you didn't do it right. Amarav If someone makes a a uh, a painting on the property of a of a ger kana, he acquired it. The ra um, the rav lekani leginsa the bei rav ella b'tzorta because rav himself. Only acquired a, a garden by by the base medrash of Rav that used to belong to a convert. He acquired it by making a uh, picture on it. it. Means making a, a design painting on it. This could be an acquisition. And we had that before. We said already before that, but that needed to be an ama. Um, that was. That was inside the house before. Now we're outside. The now, house. yeah, now it could be. But now we're talking about that this is a real painting that, that's a, a, a painting of an animal or a bird, which is going to be, which is more than just having a, a design of flowers. Before we were talking about a decorative design of flowers. The flower was the concrete, and there was two options. It was the engraving or the plaster. Now this is just going down to. No. no, the plaster didn't have to do with the um, didn't have to do with the uh, with the painting there. The first, example. first example was plaster. He plastered it. The second one was the yeah or no no yeah one or the other no but the plaster wasn't a decorative plaster that was just plaster okay. So now the, my, my, the, let's just uh, clarify. When it said the the picture, right? There was a picture there, plaster or the picture. So this picture. Yeah, but it was engraved. Um, how do you know that it was engraved? Yeah, the, the, the way the Rashbam puts it is that the difference is that over there it was not a uh, uh, not such a fancy picture. Over there, when we said it needed to be an entire ama, an ama by an ama, and it needed to be specifically in front of the door, which we didn't say here. So he says that over there, that was because it wasn't such a fancy picture. It was just like a decorative design, like you do a border on something. So that would just be, that has to be significant. But over here, where it's a uh, picture of an animal or a bird, it could be even something small, and it doesn't have to be specifically on the. Is there an Easter? Yeah, and that's I'm interesting. Well, say, say animals or birds. Over here, it's animals or birds, not over there. That, that's the. Over there, the Rashbam says that it was uh, like flowers or something. Yeah. Okay. Um. I don't. I don't think. I don't. I don't know if it matters if it's engraved uh, or painted. Or, you know, I'm not sure if that's a that's a big deal. Could like, be. But it didn't say like, that. Sun, oh, sun or sun planet. planet. That's he's right. Sun, sun or planet sure. is a problem with to make uh, pictures. But animals. what about animals? Some animals, eagles, um, elephants, lions, like all these animals that they produce for all these sort of things like eight animals. Not oh, Hill is saying that there's eight animals. That you're not allowed to make pictures of. Do you remember that from the Ramam? Eight animals. Which ones? Eagle, um, lion, um, elephants, like things that people have worship before. Uh huh. So giraffes are okay. Possums. Uh, yes, rats. I know. Rats might be Who's an issue. Things. I think some people worship planets. Them. You're not allowed to have that's, pictures of planets. That's all Greek. Oh. They have some kids the name. Them. Right? So Remember when they um, were doing the preschool down at Landau? Uh, maybe it was like 35 years ago. They, um, they had a painting outside, like the sun and like 
grass, like for the preschool, they, they made it like very, maybe Rabbi Korf came by, Rabbi Korf Sr. came by and said, you can't have a picture of the sun. You have to make it, put a uh, cloud in front, you know, like you block the, uh, you shouldn't have the full sun. You shouldn't have the full. You have to go worship the sun. Is there, um, it's interesting, no? What is that? What are you doing? Yeah, designer of power, right? No, but it's engraved. On the top oh, he engraved designer of flower. Okay, yeah. Ashram says engraved. I'm just not sure because the Rashbam later doesn't make that distinction if it's a engraving or. But it also switched because at the beginning it was just a flower. Now he's saying animals are birds. Yeah, that's what that's what he says that it's animals and birds. So I'm not sure if over here it needs to be painted or maybe over here it's engraved also. So I'm not sure if your distinction is correct. It's the engraving or the because what he what he really spells out is that it's the um the, it's the the uh, extent of the of the picture. Yeah. Surah Chayavayv Chashuva. He didn't. He doesn't distinguish between the engraving. Probably over here it's also engraved. Right. It has to be an animal. Animal or a bird is a is a better Kenyan where you don't need to have the criteria that we said before. Does someone have to tell it's an animal? Or? Oh, uh, apparently, apparently it would be. So it's, it's supposed to be something nice. It's my. You have a statement like this. Sadam is yemes if you have a field that has borders, once you do a little um, a dig, a little uh, hoeing over there, so Kanakuli acquired the whole thing. Shmuel Amar, Shmuel says, like an you only acquire that one spot that you used your uh, hoe, you used your shovel. And according to Shmuel, how do you acquire the whole thing? You're going to have to plow the whole field. Um, Obviously, we're talking about the Nechse Ager. We're not talking about yeah. selling the uh, someone that's selling it. According to Rav, that says that if you one hoe acquires the whole field, that was if there was a border to the field. We know what the, what the field is, but let's say there was no border on this field. So how would you acquire it? How much would you acquire? Amara de Shuri Vahada. Uh, you would acquire as long as a uh, a pair of oxen would go would pull the plow and return. So, so the two, two rows. Two rows, right? That's how much you would acquire. If you would plow two rows, then that's what you would acquire. Okay. I'm Rabbi What do you ask? What are you asking? Her? I'm sure. Um, it says the Okay. Yeah, we don't use uh, for children's. Uh, you know. We don't use non-kosher animals for children's things, but it's not like you know that I have a picture of a non-kosher animal. Three little bears between two little chickens. Yeah, <laughs> three little lambs. <laughs> yeah, we don't have Mickey Mouse. You, know, you don't have these these uh, these dolls or stuffed things. You you know that the kids uh, get close to. You don't have. You're allowed to have. Um, I don't know goldfish. Uh, goldfish are kosher. Uh, what are the this other fish that they have that aren't kosher? What about pets? Yeah, you wouldn't have a pet. Mm -hmm. um, you're not supposed to, probably not a, something like that they cuddle. That's um, you can have a dog or cat. Uh, unless it would be useful. You know, if you don't have anything, it would be useful. Yeah. I'm Rabbi Yudam Shmuel. Ask your local rabbi. Rabbi Yudam says the name of Shmuel. Now, the Rabbi Yudam Shmuel says the name of Shmuel. Now, the this is a, a an interesting piece over here. Property of a non-Jew that's being sold to a to a to, to someone. So it's considered like a desert, and whoever acquires it 
can acquire it. It becomes ownerless. You have to follow a little bit or else it's like a confusing. My timer. What's the reason for that? The non-Jew considers it sold once he receives the money. So he sold it. He received the money. And he walks away. The field's not his anymore. But the Jew doesn't acquire it until he receives the document. So in the, in the interim, there's a, 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 a dangerous zone. This is... Um, um, Anyone can come at yeah, Anyone can acquire it. This is where we said one second, what's with this document going on? Amalei Abaya or Rav Yosef. Abaya says to Rav Yosef, who was saying this statement? This was a statement from Rav Yudah Mershmol. Abaya asks his teacher, Rav Yosef, Miyam Mershmol, Hachi, did Shmol really say that? Shmol, Dina de Malchus Dina. Shmol is the one that says, Dina de Malchus Dina, that the rule of the government is the rule. Malka Amar Le in the in the the government rule is that you can only acquire with a document. So how does the non-Jew even acquire it without the document? Amalei Anole Yadana. He says I don't know, and the, the commentaries say it doesn't mean that he really doesn't know. It means I'm not interested in uh, in that issue. I have something else to discuss. Uv Dahavi Bedura Dereus Bedura Dereusa Bedura Dereusa. There was a, a place that was a, a um, shepherd's village. There was a Jew that bought a field from an Anjou. And another Jew came and dug a hole. He comes to Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says it belongs to the second person. He already paid for it. So, okay. So you see, this halach is correct. Now, this is a proof, because since Rabbi Yehuda is a student of Shmuel, student of Rabbi also, but he's a student of Shmuel, so we say that, you see, this is how Shmuel holds. That's what you're talking about? You're bringing me a proof from this village of, uh, of the shepherds. Over there, those were fields that, uh, uh, that was a... Um, a valley that was hidden, which means that they didn't, that was hidden from the tax. They didn't pay the tax. And Malcolm or Mandi of Taska Lechel, Mandi of Taska And, and the, the king says that whoever will pay the tax will acquire the land. So that itself has its own issue over the uh, specific rule that the person that was coming to pay the tax, the person that was taking it was the one that was going to give the tax. Okay, now. Um, and that meant that even without the document. However, if there would be a land that was inherited that a non-Jew owned and he sells it, could be that um, that it belongs to the person that he sells it to, even though the second person shows up and starts to do, starts to... Um, Uh, starts to, uh, even though the second person did, did, dug it, but when the document, he's going to make a document for the first person, so he's going to acquire the, uh, the first person's going to acquire it, one that, that bought it, is going to acquire it with the document. When he gets the document later. He's arguing on that. No, but he's saying the first one has a document that he bought it from the non-Jew. And that's not true. Originally, the case was... When he gets the document one, later, he gets, he gets it. it. So what? He gets it later. He gets later to prove that he... That he, that he right, he right. He's dealing with that all the time. Right. But when you go to a store, they can get something else. It's one of yours. It doesn't matter if somebody paid for it before. Or is it different here because it's real property? Um, I, I think it's different because it's real property. Now, the uh, the um, the Rashbam adds in that the second person is considered a Russia for doing this, even though, you know, in in, the, in that uh, earlier when we said that he would acquire it, it's it would go under the category of if there's a poor person that is trying to get a piece of cake and someone else comes and takes it first. So... Um, so we say that he's considered a Russia, he's considered wicked. 
So the same thing would apply here. This person's trying to, you see that he's trying to, he's involved in the deal. You're not supposed to come in and uh, pull it away from it. Okay, let's leave it over here. Have a good week, everyone. So we're essentially up to date. We're up to date. And tomorrow and Tuesday, I bet Mr. Hashem, I'll be able to. So imagine you'll start on Zion by the next time. Yeah. Start that. Uh, yeah. Doctor's been practicing all the time. No, he keeps on telling me to start practicing. I Wednesday or wedding to go to Wednesday.